What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some battles submitted by Windows 7 Aero in the Open Master League and he's running a team consisting of a level 51 best buddy boosted 100% Mew in the lead and then we've got a double legacy shiny Vaporeon and Excadrill in the back so a very very spicy team composition for the Open Master League and these are going to be some absolutely insane battles. So before we go into the battles, let's start with the question of the day. What's the best IV mythical Pokemon you've caught from one of the special research quest lines? So either maybe you've got 100% or 98% or something similar, or maybe you've got the best stat product to fit in the Great League or the Ultra League. Let me know in the comments section below. And with that being said, let's get into the battles now. All right, so going into the first battle here, we lead into a Kyogre. Now we're running Shadow Claw, Dragon Claw, and Flame Charge. So we can't really hit this Kyogre for much damage. So we go for a catch and we're able to catch the Surf on the Vaporeon, which is resisted. So that is a very nice catch as well. We do have the last resort to hit for some nice neutral damage. Kyogre going straight for the next Surf. They probably don't have Thunder in that case. So we're gonna farm up a ton of energy before going for the last resort here up against the Kyogre and that does so much damage. We're actually going to shield this up and hopefully we can water gun farm down this legendary Pokemon with a Vaporeon and we're able to. They come in with a Mewtwo so we go straight for the Scald here. This does have a chance to lower the Mewtwo's attack but unfortunately we don't get it. We're gonna come in with the Mew here, go for a Dragon Claw. This won't do an awful lot of damage but opponents aren't gonna know what charge moves we're running on the Mew which is really handy in this case because we get the shield and now we can go for a flame charge that also doesn't do an awful lot of damage but it is gonna boost the damage from these shadow claws unfortunately we look like we lose a cmp tie there so we're going to shield up the psi strike and it was a cmp and we're going to go for an undercharge on the dragon claw here and we're now going to be able to shadow claw farm them down they come in with an extra drill this is going to be really close now we're going to go for the flame charge it does a ton of damage we switch into the extra drill hoping that they're going to throw their energy and they do Drill Run takes out the Excadrill. Can we Shadow Claw farm them down? Yes, we can, and we're able to take that game. Into the next game, we lead into a Dragonite. So this is where it's handy having the Dragon Claw, as it will do super effective damage, although it's not gonna do too much. We're gonna go for it here, and we get a shield from the opponent. We did go up to an Ice Beam, so opponent was probably worried that we go for the Ice Beam there, but we're not running it, and we are going to let this go through it is just a dragon claw and unfortunately they're at the back to back so we will shield once and then go straight for the dragon claw and we will be able to win this match up and take out the dragonite there so they come in with a metagross can we get to the flame charge yes we can and we commit to it and this will do some nice damage to the metagross we can now come in with the extra drill or actually no we're going to come in with the vaporeon i guess that makes sense we're not going to take super effective damage from this earthquake so vaporeon a very good play there they come in with a garchomp now things are not looking the best here garchomp is pretty strong we're going to come in with the extra drill here we're able to get to the drill run before they can get to their nuke charge move we get the shield from the opponent it's actually a cmp tie and that is perfect because they go for the earth power boom taking out the extra drill once again but vaporeon is upper shield so we should be able to shield this up hopefully they don't have the Oh, I forgot what it's called, um, Sand Tomb, but they don't obviously, and we go for the Scald and we take them out there. God, I don't know why that my mind just blanked there, but let's not worry about that. Into the next game, we lead into a Hydreigon, so not a very good lead actually, kind of core breaks the team, but we do have the Dragon Claws on the Mute to hit for some nice super effective damage. They come in with a Groudon, we're able to get to two Drill Runs before they can get to an Earthquake and we get a shield advantage in this matchup. So we're gonna let the extra drill go down. And once again, we get nuked by a ground type charge move on the extra drill, but that is fine. Opponent is farming up a ton of energy. I think we can tank an earthquake, but we're gonna shield. It's a solar beam. Oh my God. I did not expect that. And then the opponent switches and catches a last resort 
on to a Melmetal. So this opponent is really surprising me at the moment. They're really good play and I did, definitely did not expect that solar beam and now they go for a thunderbolt so this opponent is just running some crazy moves on all of their pokemon and we're gonna go for a dragon claw bait here will we get the shield from this male metal yes we can and that is really good for us now i think we're just gonna oh they go for a superpower so we're easily gonna be able to tank this move now and we should be able to shadow claw farm them down now we are able to we go for the Dragon Claw. This will do some nice damage to the Hydreigon. And we switch into the Vaporeon. And we should be able to get to a last resort. But it's a CMP tie and we lose CMP. They go for the Brutal Swing. We're able to survive. Last resort almost takes them out. And we're able to Water Gun farm down the Dragon and Dark type there. And take that game into the next game we lead into a Rhyperia now this Rhyperia is probably going to be very wary of the surf but we switch into Excadrill and they're actually running the mud slap here so that is not ideal for Excadrill and we are going to shield this up we should be able to get to one more charge move before we go down and we will get there but they get an extra mud slap through so that is not ideal we get the second shield from the Rhyperia which is probably the best we can ask for we come in with the Vaporeon we're gonna no shield this it's just a stone edge so fortunately not a rock wrecker because that would have done so much damage but we're able to water gun farm them down come in with the last resort on the garchomp and i'm going to switch into the mew here go for a dragon claw i don't think this is going to ko the garchomp and it doesn't but they switch into the metagross here but we've got flame charge and this is going to do huge damage to the metagross and it will boost our attack so i think we can safely shield once and farm them down with the shadow claws and we're going to have to force the garchomp to throw their energy but it appears they're not at a charge move yet so we go for the dragon claw here and we take out the garchomp and we take that game into the next game we lead into a dragon again so this is not ideal this time we're actually going to stay in go for a dragon claw straight away and we don't get shield but we do some nice chip damage we switch into the extra drill and we're going to tank this brutal swing here it does a decent amount of damage but we're going to be able to get to a drill run here and they will have to shield this if they want to survive they do shield it and unfortunately we're beaten to the next charge move by the high dragon they go for the brutal swing once again they switch into dragonite and we don't throw straight away so we're able to get to a rock slide we get a shield from the dragonite and we're just barely able to get to another rock slide here up against the dragonite that is really clutch there and we're going to come in with the vaporeon here we realize that against the double dragon team vaporeon isn't really going to be able to do an awful lot so we're just going to tank the damage here and we're probably just yeah we'll just let all these charge moves come through and then we switch into the mute the, dra the dragonite should be dry but they're just able to get to one more dragon claw once again we let this go through and the opponent has a metagross in the back so we're going for the flame charge and once again we should be able to take out this metagross here but they catch on the high dragon so a really good play by the opponent that still does a decent amount of damage we're going to come in with the vapor on here hopefully we can farm them down but we're not quite able to they go for the brutal swing and we have a scald loaded we're going to go for it up against the metagross is this going to be enough to take them out no but we're able to water gun farm them down and take that game what a crazy game so now we're leading into a dialga this is the first dialga we've seen in the video i think so that's kind of crazy not to see one so far we go for a dragon claw we don't get a shield we're going to switch trying to catch the resisted iron head but we're not able to they've probably farmed up to the draco meteor now but they go for an iron head bait which is perfect we call it and they switch into a male metal so that is great because we couldn't really throw for any damage up against the dialga but they come in with the male metal we land the scald and we lower their attack so they go for a rock slide that's not going to do much damage we go for another scald here just before they throw the next rock slide and we get a shield from the male metal but they're going to commit to a full farm down we switch into the mew we go for a dragon claw can we get a shield yes we can and that is really good for us now we're going to no shield this they are debuffed remember so rock slides aren't going to be doing too much damage 
They go for a superpower, which is going to do even less damage. They come in with a Tyranitar. For some reason, we go for a Flame Charge, but that doesn't matter too much. We are going to come in with the Excadrill here, and we should be able to easily go for a Drill Run, but instead we over farm, and now this is a CMP tie. So is that going to cost us now? We go for the Drill Run here. This should be taking out the Tyranitar, but we undercharge it. Actually, maybe a fully charged one wouldn't have taken them out. But we're just barely able to farm them down before they get to another move and now this is fine. We over farm again but it doesn't matter. We've got the back to back draw runs. Dialga doesn't have another charge move so we go for the first one and oh actually we just take out the Dialga there and we're going to be able to take out the Mel Metal and take that game. So a little bit... Um, greedy with the over farming there but we're still able to take that game and into the next game we lead into a Groudon so we're going to call a bait here it is just a fire punch actually no they didn't even get up to the earthquake so obviously just going to be a fire punch here another fire punch coming from the Groudon we go for a dragon claw is this going to get a shield from the Groudon no and dragon claw doesn't do an awful lot of damage we're going to switch into the vapor on here this opponent loves going straight for the fire punch so we're able to catch it and take very minimal resisted damage we're going straight for the scald unfortunately both moves are resisted but scald has an opportunity to lower the attack but we don't get it which is certainly not ideal we're just gonna let the vapor and go down they're running thunder so that is really good for this extra drill as it doesn't have to fear the draco meteor but still we're gonna go for a move before they can get to their charge move but we get a shield from this dialga which is perfect are we going to shield up here? No, they go for the thunder again. So maybe just a single move Pokemon. They switch and catch the fire punch once again on the Mew. Really good catch there. We're going for a Dragon Claw. This shouldn't take out the Groudon. But we hopefully can farm them down. No, we're not going to be able to. So we're going to go for another Dragon Claw here. This does take out the Groudon. They come in with the Dialga. We're able to get to another Dragon Claw. So we're just spamming moves with this Mew. And now we should be able to farm down with mud shots fully and we're able to what do they have in the back it is a Mewtwo so we can get to two drill runs here we get the shield here and can we get to the third drill run to take out this Mewtwo we land the second one it does about 50% and we get to the final drill run is this gonna be enough to take out the Mewtwo yes it is and we live on one HP and we take that game so what a crazy battle there into the next game we lead into a Garchomp so I imagine we're going to farm up to a um, Ice Beam before throwing a Dragon Claw. So we should be able to get a shield here. And we're able to. So that's the thing about Mew is you just have no idea what charge moves it's going to run. Especially in the Master League. Whereas in the, in the Great League, typically you run like Surf or Wild Charge or Flame Charge. But who knows what you're running in the Master League. So really good play there. Unfortunately, not the best timing it looks like. And we get a shield with the Dragon Claw and we're able to get to another Dragon Claw. This Garchomp is getting greedy and we're able to just barely not take him out. But my opponent, the opponent doesn't realize that. We're going to come in with the Vaporeon here. We've seen that it's not too bad in this matchup as long as they don't have Thunder. But they are farming up a ton of energy which is not looking good for this Vaporeon. And now I think we are going to shield this up and it's a Hydro Pump so that would have done a lot of damage but certainly not as much as Thunder and we can now over farm a little bit, go for the last resort up against the Kyogre, taking them out and they have a Togekiss in the back so we're easily going to be able to get to two Rock Slides here before they can get to a Flamethrower. First one comes through, hits for massive damage and we're able to get to the second one and this will be taking out the Togekiss. And we take that game. Into the next game, we lead into a Lugia. Now, this is not a bad matchup, really, because we do have the Shadow Claws. And we can go straight Flame Charge and boost our attack, meaning that the Shadow Claws are going to be doing even more damage. But Lugia is such a tanky Pokemon. You see that it took that like an absolute champ. But we should be able to deal some more damage now that we've boosted our attack. We go for the flame charge here, that does a lot of damage and now we should be able to shield this and then fully Shadow Claw farm them down and come up with a ton of energy so that is a really good scenario here. We're going to go for another flame charge up against this Dialga. 
We get a shield from the opponent and we commit to a final flame charge and this will be doing some decent damage now. We get another shield from the opponent so Mew just absolutely going on a tear there. Unfortunately, we CMP tie here, but we do get to the drill run and this will be taking out the Dialga. We're actually going to undercharge it and then the opponent is smart and they switch instantly. So really good play there. Now, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to win this one. They go for a side strike. We're going to go for the Scold here. This does have a chance to lower the attack, but more importantly, we just need to land some damage. And unfortunately, we're not able to take out this Mewtwo. We're actually going to no shield it and hope that we can come in with the Excadrill and farm them down. We're going to shield this up. And we go for the drill run straight away. Remember the Dialga is still alive, has a small amount of HP, but we're just barely able to mudshot farm them down with like one HP remaining and take that game. And into the final battle of the video, we lead into a Mewtwo. So this is a good lead, but of course they could be running Shadow Ball. We're actually going to call the bait here. And it is just a side strike, so really good play there. We're going to go for the flame charge, boosting our attack. The opponent shields it up, and now we should be in a good position. We are going to shield this up, and it is the Shadow Ball this time, so really good play there. They switch into a Yveltal. We land the Dragon Claw, and now we're going to switch into the Excadrill here, and we should be able to get to a Rock Slide before they can go for a Focus Blast. Rock Slide. Gets a shield from the opponent, and I think we're just going to call the bait here. It is just a Dark Pulse. I'm not sure if they had enough energy for the Dark Pulse, uh, for the Focus Blast there, but I wasn't really counting. We go for the Rock Slide. Unfortunately, it doesn't do enough damage so that we can farm them down with Mud Shots. So this is the correct play here, just letting the Excadrill go down. And we're able to Water Gun farm down the Eveltal. They switch into a Metagross and we're going for a Flame Charge here. This will be doing a lot of super effective damage. They switch back into the Mewtwo and we're able to fully farm them down and get to another Flame Charge up against the Metagross. And this will be taking out the Metagross and we take that game. So there you have it, some absolutely insane battles in the Open Master League with Mew. The thing about Mew is that it has so many different charge moves and because you don't often see it in the Master League, opponents have no idea what to expect so you can pretty much always get a shield advantage or do some massive damage with Mew in the Master League. So a really cool pick here. Of course, it's a massive XL candy grind. You have to walk like 20 kilometers just to get a single XL candy. And even then it's not fully guaranteed. So really, really tough grind. Probably the only way you're gonna be able to get a Mew is from rare XL candies and just getting a ridiculous amount of regular rare candies and putting them into Mew and then converting them into XL candies but you'd have to do a ridiculous amount of raids to do that. So it's not surprising that not many people have invested in a level 50 Mew, but you've seen here today that it is really, really strong. So that's gonna be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, then make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And with that being said, let's get into the shout outs from my previous video. So firstly, we've got Kumal Lissus, who has a Shundo Celebi and a Shlundo Luxray without Lucky Trade. Now the Luxray is very cool, but to have a Shundo Celebi is extremely rare, as we all only get one opportunity at that, so that's a very cool Pokemon to have. Next, we've got Bernardo Corti, who got a perfect Snorlax on the very first day of playing back in 2016, which is extremely awesome and then more recently we got grabby who says that they've got a schlando cowboy hat snorlax which has only been available at the gofest event so that is extremely rare so very cool for both of them and finally we got summit sape who caught a shiny clefairy which was glitched by niantic for a few hours so this was back when only shiny cleffa was available shiny clefable was not available to catch in the wild but Niantic made a mistake which meant that it was available to catch for about two hours or maybe slightly longer, I can't remember, but only a handful of people across the entire world were able to get their hands on this shiny at the time which was extremely, extremely rare so that is really cool that they were able to catch this. 
So with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.